into episode two. What if Peter Quill attacked Earth's Mightiest Heroes? And I immediately laughed when I read that. And it's your boy Icon with another Marvel TV review, animated review for you, episode two. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and all that beautiful goodness. Put a comment down in the comment section as we talk about some more what if. So in this particular episode, it tells the story of when Handu had captured Peter Quill back in the 80s and he was supposed to bring him to his daddy and then he changed his mind and decided to keep him and raise him as his own. In this particular Earth, Handu actually brought him to his daddy and his daddy basically used him as a tool, pumped his son up full of power, and then he unleashed him on the planets of the world and he was going through the galaxy destroying all the nine realms. So he finally makes it to Earth. And then when he makes it to Earth, you gotta, cause I'm saying, I'm like, okay, so like, why would he attack Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Like we don't have any, this is the eighties. And then, you know, because it's the eighties, then we get the Peggy Carter and the Howard Stark cameo. And it's always good to see Peggy Carter cause like, I love me some Peggy Carter. And then, you know, cause it's the eighties now, they were just like, oh, he's like, oh, this boy's on his way to destroy the planet. And you know, and then she's just like, who do we have on our roster that can save the world? And, then, and it takes us to the most unlikely band, but realistic band of characters which is T'Chaka, T'Challa's father. He came from Wakanda to help save the planet. Some random guy named Foster. I have no idea who this guy is. I don't know if he got brought up at some point. I don't know if he was in a movie I didn't see or a TV. I don't know who's black. It, was, it almost seemed like they was like, yo, we need more black people. So they just threw in some random black dude and he had the Hank's, he had one of Hank's suits, one of Hank's um, Ant-Man suits. It was also confusing because they also called in Hank and <laughs> they brought in Hank onto the team. Hope was there as like a young girl and he brought Hope with her to the Stark, you know, to the, um, the Stark base or the Shield base, wherever the hell they were. And I don't, they never really explained because Hank, Hank said he didn't work there anymore because when Hope was just like, oh, dad, is this your job? He was like, nah, I don't work for these motherfuckers anymore. But they never explain why this random black dude has one of his suits and is parading around as like giant man. That was never explained. I, like, I don't know who this black dude is. The Winter Soldier ended up joining the team because like the Russians sent him over. And if I was the Americans, like I would have shot him on sight. But it was also cool to get the moment where Peggy looked at him and she's like, oh my God, how would it's Bucky Barnes? <laughs> and you know, he's just like, oh, but that's not Bucky anymore. So that was actually nice. Like it's, it's, it's nice that they acknowledge that, you know, acknowledge those types of things. And then um, who, who's the other girl? The girl from, like, they called her um, Larson. And I think I remember her from the first Captain Marvel. I think she was like their mentor, like her and um, the black girl, Mon Monica Mama. I think she was their mentor before she died in like the beginning of the film. I think that was her. I was confused as to why she had the Captain Marvel suit, but in the comment section below, please explain to me who Larson is and please explain to me who the hell, um, the black dude was because like, I had no idea who these people were. So now they're, you know, so the team was assembled, like the, be, be it ever so crumbled. The team is assembled. They're on their way to go stop young Peter Quill, Quill because now that he's made his way to earth, he's going to destroy earth. Like he destroyed all the other planets. They tracked him down to Coney Island. So what a menace, <laughs> you know, like he gets to, he gets to Coney Island. And then when he gets to Coney Island, I was about to call them the Avengers, they're not the Avengers. When he gets to Coney Island, the team that was assembled, they're in Coney Island setting up positions and perimeters for the sole purpose of killing this child. The boy was on a merry-go-round eating cotton candy. And as soon as I saw that, I said, this is what you're about to fuck this whole thing up. Because if you see a child, I understand this child like destroyed the galaxy, whatever the case may be, and he blew up Manhattan. If you see a child, sitting in Coney Island on a merry-go-round, eating cotton candy, chances are you should probably sit down and have a conversation with them. But that's not what they did. They went in guns blazing as we thought they would. This whole big thing ensued. Eventually they ended up taking the poor boy down. They shrunk him and then they brought him back to base. So now they got him locked up in the base. He's in the basement. And while he's in the basement, they're trying to figure out what to do. And they were, and then that's when, that's when Thor showed up, <laughs> you know, like Odin's son. That's when Thor showed up and he was just like, oh, this boy must face Asgardian justice. Because Thor said he, before he came to earth, he tore through all the other nine, well, the eight realms. Like he destroyed all, I guess he destroyed Asgard too. He said he destroyed all of the nine realms. And then Thor had tracked him to earth. He was like, this boy must die. And then everybody was just like, well, we got to find out what the actual plan is first. Meanwhile, Peter's dad, Ego, he was back on his planet. He was like, why is my son not terraformed this planet yet? And then the computer said that your son got shot 
shot down. So then daddy was like, fuck it, I'm just going to go down there and take care of it myself. So now Ego's on his way to Earth, and they're trying to figure out what to do with the boy. They had realized, they said that there was a plant. Well, Thor told him, he said that he found this plant, like this um, in Missouri or whatever, Kansas or some shit. He said there was a plant. And he said these plants are responsible for destroying the Earth because what is happening is Ego is using these little seedlings to embed himself into the planet and then he absorbs the planet and takes it over. So they were just like, yo, we gotta get the seedling off the goddamn planet as quickly as possible. But then he was just like, no, he's, but Thor was like, I wanna kill the boy and get my revenge for Asgard, you know, for victory. And while they were having these conversations, Hope basically went down to the basement, you know, a la Peter Quill style with the, with the Walkman. She ended up having a conversation with him like kid to kid. And, you know, he told her the story about his mom. She told him about her mom. The two of them bonded. All you had to do from the beginning was just send the girl, just, just, just send Hope in there to talk to the boy and everything would have been fine from jump. But then Hope ends up letting him out of the prison so he can go down to Missouri to go see his mom. He gets down to Missouri, he sees his mom's grave, and now he's upset because, you know, like obviously his mom died and he sees her grave. The heroes show up, they find out what Hope did, they have a conversation with her, and Hope's like, I'm not gonna tell you where he is unless you plan on helping him and you don't go down there to try to kill him because you were trying to kill a 10 year old boy. And then they were just like, fine, you know, like that's what we'll do, like we'll, we'll try to help him. And then that's when daddy showed up. So then when daddy showed up, um, two of the members went down to Missouri to go get the boy. Everybody else stayed behind to fight um, Ego. This battle ensued where they fought Ego. They was getting their asses whooped. Hank and Larson go down to Missouri. They're talking to, you know, they're talking to Peter. They're trying to come in. Cause then, and, and, and I got to give Hank kudos for this because, like, Hope was giving Hank shit throughout the entire episode. But in this particular moment, like, Hank tapped into, you know, his, his fatherliness, like his fatherhood. He tapped into his emotion, and he was actually able to talk to the boy, which is what he should have did from Jump Street. And then he was just like, you know, like your mom's gone. He's like, I'm sorry. He said, I lost my wife too. And then he asked him, he was like, you know, let's come together and be a family. Bucky had snuck his way to Missouri and he was going to pop the child. But then Howard Stark got in his ear and he was like, don't kill the boy, Bucky. That's not what Steve Rogers would have wanted. And then, you know, once you say the S word, <laughs> once, you, once you say Steve, then that's what wakes Bucky Barnes up. Bucky didn't take the shot and he walked away. Peter ended up accepting Hank's invitation. They flew back to the base where Ego was. Hank and Peter together, they, they, you know, along with the seedling, because Peter used the power of the seedling to power himself up to destroy his daddy, and he killed his dad. Before he killed his dad, his dad told him, he was like, I was the one who gave your mother cancer, <laughs> like killed your mother. And then he was like, no, not my mom. And then he, you know, he destroyed him, and then he blew up Ego, but, you know, he saved the world. He saved Earth. But as Thor said, he was just like, oh, pieces of ego are still spread out throughout the nine realms. He was like, I must go from planet to planet and destroy this thing once and for all. And then that's when Hank was just like, well, if you're going to do it, you're not going to do it alone. We'll do it as a team. So now every single character, two of them, I have no idea who they are. Every single character, they band together to help Thor travel the globe or well, the universe, the galaxy, to go stop these seedlings and to save all these other planets. Obviously, Peter was allowed to go because he's the only one who can legitimately destroy them. And Hope went because she's his friend i mean tachaka just abandoned wakanda <laughs> i don't know how it was it was kind of it was a good episode i actually did enjoy this episode and thank you for tuning in so this is a, I, this, this was a fun episode and like i said it was nice to see it was always, like i said it's always good to see peggy carter and howard stark and this was and that was funny because this was before the winter soldier killed howard stark and his and you know and mom so now there's another what if because now that they snap Bucky out of his mind control, he never kills Stark's parents. So what happens to Tony Stark now? Like, can he, does he still become Iron Man with the arc reactor? So there are some more interesting things that came with that, but share your questions, comments, and concerns down below, and we will continue to talk about it. Let me know what you thought about this particular episode of Marvel's What If Episode 2. What if Peter Quill came to attack the end? I said, well, we'll continue to roll on because we got about four more episodes of Marvel's What If to go. So we'll keep banging them and banging them and banging them to 2023, 2024, and beyond. So that was it, everybody. So thank you for tuning in as always. So until next time for episode three of Marvel's Good Air. Look out for Peter Quill because now he's taking over and we're out this bitch.